Welcome to this very important presentation. At the end of this presentation, we are going to derive the relation between the current density and the electric field intensity. And uh, this relation we call as the Ohm's law. Okay. Till now, most of you have been heard about V is equal to IR as the Ohm's law. But it is the second form. We are discussing about the first form and that's why I have to take the drift velocity as the part of this lecture series. If you are in school, definitely it is very important thing for you. But if you are in college, it may sound not that important. But the result at the end of this presentation is definitely important. So let's start this presentation with the drift velocity. And uh, I will talk about the free electrons first. When you are having a conductor, you are having so many free electrons inside it. And if there is no potential difference across the conductor, like in this case, I'm having a conductor, but there is a potential difference across it. If I remove this potential difference, the electrons will perform a Brownian movement. Okay. And the Brownian movement will look something like this, a random movement. And uh, in this, if I see the time between the two successive collisions, let's say this is point A and this is point B, the electron collides here with some particle, whether it is an atom or electron, and then again goes back and collide here, then the time between these two successive collision is said to be tau. Tau is my time between the two collisions. So this is one thing that we have to know. And this is the Brownian movement. The electron is there. This is my electron. Now what happens if I apply a electric field or a battery across it? Why I'm saying electric field? Because this phase will be at low potential and this phase will be at high potential. So what will happen? An electric field will be produced here. The direction of the electric field will be like this from left to right or from high potential to the low potential and it is E. Now this electron performing a Brownian movement will be drifted. Okay, this whole thing will be drifted in this direction. Why in this direction? Because the high potential is there and the low potential is there or you already know the drift of electron or the motion of electron is opposite to the electric field. So if there is an electron performing a Brownian movement will be drifted in this way and the rate at which it is drifting we call as the drift velocity and the drift velocity the drift velocity is written as VD. Okay, it is the representation for it. Now let's move to the another important thing which is given as I is equal to NEAVD. This is something you cannot derive but you have to remember this thing. N is the number of electrons, E is the electron, A is the area and VD is the drift velocity. Now you already know the current density is given as I by A current per unit cross section area. So if I divide the both sides, the left hand side and the right hand side with area A, then I'm having I by A equals to N E. This A will be cancelled out V D. Any V D and it is what? J, the current density. Now the other thing that we can have is the value of V D, the drift velocity. It is equal to E E by M tau where E is the charge capital E is the electric field this thing and M is the mass of electron tau is the time between the two collisions that I have explained in the initial part of the lecture. So I will put this VD here and let's see what we are having J equals to N E square capital E by M into tau. Now I will rearrange this thing little bit and E square tau by M into E. So we are having this thing which is constant. 
the value of e is definitely constant the number of electrons is also con constant the free electrons is definitely constant for a particular type of element mass of electron is constant the time between the two collision is also constant so overall they are constant and they are different for the different elements let me write this thing down it is different for different elements okay it is different for copper it is different for aluminium it is different for iron steel and whatever the conductor you are having they are having the different values and this whole thing we call as the conductivity and the conductivity is represented as sigma so I can write this things as J equals to sigma E and this is my ohms law this o is capital or i can say that j is directly proportional to e as sigma being the constant so this was the result that we have to derive from the drift velocity and uh, it is very important because most of the student will not know how ohms law actually looks the first form of ohms law actually looks it is j equals to sigma e okay in the next presentation we will discuss the second form of the ohms law that is v is equal to i r and also we will derive definitely the resistance r which will be used so much in the whole lecture series so this is all for this presentation and one more thing you can assume or uh, imagine this drift velocity as the push when you are standing in a line when someone pushes you or the other student or other person from the back a uh, drift is there and the drift is very fast don't consider it to be a slow process the drift is very fast process you can imagine how fast electricity goes in the wires when you switch on any appliances it just start instantly so the drift is a very fast process don't consider it as slow one so this is all for this presentation see you in the next one